Hi, I'm Christina Newland. I'm the lead film critic for the iNewspaper. And I'm here to introduce a film which for me is very close to my heart and a screening which is close to my heart uh, because it is in honor and memory of the great Jean-Luc Godard, uh, who for me is not just one of the great filmmakers of the 20th century, but also one of the great artists, full stop, of the 20th century and beyond. It's hard to even overstate Godard's influence and his revolutionary impact on cinema and perhaps on wider culture as well. And revolutionary in the sense of all-encompassing revolution, not just him being politically left-wing and radical in that sense, but also being uh, radical in the language of cinema, and it's very vernacular. Um, his, his change, or the sea change that he belonged to in the Nouvelle Vague of the French New Wave from the early 60s, from his film Breathless onward, um, represented something which would never really be replicated again in cinema history. And what we see in 1965's Peril of the Fou is we see a film which is combating the genre conventions that already exist, but it's also taking those things and putting them in a blender. It's sort of cinematic anarchy. It's a road movie in the traditional sense, and it's fairly straightforward on paper. We have Jean-Paul Belmondo, who is playing a sort of bourgeois married man, and Anna Karina, who was recently divorced from Godard uh, and had been very much his muse in that period playing this sort of capricious younger woman who's this babysitter he runs away with. And she has connections to shady people, and so the adventure unfolds sort of from there. Beyond that, it's quite difficult to describe Piero Le Fou, other than to say that it has bursts of incredible primary color and literary references every second that are you know, quite possible that they will go over your head. They certainly did for me when I was 16 and saw this film for the first time. But the overall effect of the film is incredible. And in 1965, when the film came out in France, nobody really knew what to make of it. It had some rave reviews from critics, and it also had some pans. And at Cannes in 65, someone asked Godard, is your film a comedy? And in classic, playful Godard style, he said, it's a comedy if you laughed at it. If you didn't, no. And that goes some way to explain his attitude, I think, and perhaps the attitude of the film. I think it's important to know that no matter how cerebral Godard is, that you can always know that he's winking and nodding at you a little bit, and that you can probably take a step back and understand that he's doing something because it's fun, just as much as he's doing something because it's intellectual. And I think that's quite important about all of the 60s films. He had something of a hot hand in the 1960s. He had Alphaville, Viva Savi, Weekend, Band of Outsiders, this film, Pierre Le Fou. Um, but it's worth saying that he is a filmmaker who continued to innovate throughout his entire life and who never stopped evolving, even up until this year at 88 years old and he's still working on a film, purportedly. His Goodbye to Language is a 3D film. He was playing with new tools, even at an advanced age, and that was true of his entire career. He was the naughty schoolboy, the provocateur, the philosopher of cinema. It's hard to even encapsulate in words what he has done for the movies. Um, but the great filmmaker Chantal Ackerman, who made Jan Dalman, uh, said that after she saw Pierre Le Fou in 1965, that she didn't really know what to say about it, except for that she knew when she left the cinema that she knew she wanted to make movies. And for me, that's one of the great compliments that you can give to any film. Uh, so without any further ado, please enjoy the absolute anarchy and joy of Pierre Le Fou, and please go home and watch every Jean-Luc Godard film that you can get your hands on, every single one, because they all have enormous cinematic pleasure to await you. Thank you.